So we're developing our language of discussing predicate statements. The first thing we want to talk about are free and bound variables. So you've got a predicate statement and it's got variables in it. If the variable has a quantifier that controls it, it's called a bound variable. If it doesn't, it's called free. So here's a potential predicate statement. There exists an, uh, sorry, e of x implies there exists a y so that p of y implies for every z, q of z or p of x. y and z are bound. This variable y is bound by this existential. And this variable z is bound by this universal quantifier. So these variables have been bound down by quantifiers. But x is a variable which is free. It has not been quantified. Okay, that's the distinction between bound and free variables. If every single variable is bound, we call it a sentence. And it's actually now a, a statement about the underlying statements. So here we have a sentence. The variables are x and y. x has been bound by this existential quantifier, and y has been bound by this universal one. So every uh, variable has been bound. It's a sentence. And this is a statement about for which constants is the underlying statement true. Does there exist an x so that if p of x is true, then for every choice of y, q of y is true? It's not making a claim about what specific constants this becomes true for, but rather a statement that does there exist such a choice at all so that if this hypothesis is true, then for every choice of constant y, this conclusion becomes true. A statement with free variables, however, can't really be evaluated as true and false until those free variables are either replaced with constants or bound. So up here, e of x, well, x is a free variable, so I can't evaluate this as true or not until I choose which x I want to plug in, or I come back and I quantify it and bind it. Okay, now let's talk about what are called terms. Variables and constants are called terms. They're just the things that you can put into a predicate statement. Once you plug a constant into a predicate statement, it becomes like a very explicit statement that you can evaluate as true or false. Two is bigger than three, false. Eight is bigger than one, true. X is bigger than four is not really a statement yet, but it is an allowable use of a variable and it's something we're going to be considering. Anything you can plug in, variables or constants are called terms. There might be some other things that you're allowed to plug in and you call them terms. So for example, suppose the domain of discourse is positive integers and E of n represents the number n is even. So you could say something like x is even, y is even, z is even. I don't know if those are true or false until I make a choice like three is even, false, six is even, true, 11 is even, false, but at least now they're statements. Okay, so these are all statements. I can't evaluate them as true or false until I plug in a specific constant, but they are a predicate statement. And these are things I can actually explicitly uh, check out. But you could also do something like, is 2 plus 3 even? Now, 2 plus 3 is not exactly a constant. 5 is a constant, but 2 plus 3 is some sort of weird expression involving constants. Is x squared plus y even? Is 2 to the y even? These aren't quite constants and they're not exactly variables, but they're some sort of expression involving constants, variables, or both that do make sense. And we're not going to be too explicit about these definitions, just saying that terms are things that it makes sense to plug into your predicate statements. Okay, so whatever the domain of discourse is, there might be legitimate ways of combining constants and variables into potential choices to be plugged into predicate statements. And all of them are called terms. And we're just gonna play this by ear, okay? So usually our domain of discourse is gonna be real numbers or whole numbers, and you can do things like add them or raise them to powers. What does merit some discussion is the substitution principle, specifically when it comes to free variables. Substitution in predicate logic is way more restricted than it was in propositional logic, just that sort of single letter statement logic. We can substitute any free variable x with a new variable or term, but it's actually kind of restricted. You have to be using no variables that already exist in any line of the proof that can be referred to. So if the variable y appears anywhere, 
anywhere at all in your proof in a line that you can still refer to, you cannot use it in a substitution. Anytime you substitute something in, it's got to be made out of totally new variables. And that's only for free variables. If you have a bound variable, you cannot substitute for it at all. It's just not allowed. There's other techniques for handling bound variables and constructing two column proofs, and we'll get to them. But substitution is only for free variables and you have to use entirely new terms. The reason for this restriction is to make sure you don't accidentally imply a specific constant has contradictory properties. So for example, you could have two different statements, x is bigger than zero and y is less than zero. There's no immediate reason that you can't pick an x and a y that make both of them true. But suppose you came back and you substituted instead of y, you plug in x in this expression here. Then I have two statements, x is bigger than zero, x is less than zero, and that can't both be true. So if I substitute into this expression using a variable that already exists, I might give some sort of contradiction. This is why when you do a substitution on a free variable, it has to be, the substitution that you're putting in has to be with variables that are totally new and don't exist anywhere else in the proof so that you don't accidentally make this kind of mistake. So in short, only free variables can be substituted, not bound variables, only free. But you have to use entirely new variables when you do that substitution. Let's look at an example. So here is a predicate statement. And suppose the domain of discourse is all real numbers again. So let's look at a bunch of possible substitutions and ask, are they valid or not? All right, so here's a big list of substitutions. We're gonna check each one, whether it's a legitimate thing to substitute. Can I replace every instance of X with Z? No, because X is a bound variable. There is no procedure for substituting a bound variable. Can I replace every instance of Y with Z? Yes, Y is a free variable and Z is totally new. It doesn't show up anywhere in here. Can I replace every instance of Y with X? No, Y is a free variable. That's not the problem, okay? But X is not new. X appears, even though it's a bound variable, it's still off limits for substitution here. Any variable you use when you uh, substitute into a free variable has to be entirely new. Can I replace every instance of X with Y? No, X is bound variable. That has not changed from the first example. Can I replace every instance of Y with the term 3Z squared minus one? Yes, Y is a free variable and 3Z squared only involves the constant Z, I'm sorry, the variable Z, which is entirely new. Can I replace every instance of Y with two comma three comma E to the Y? No, because two comma three comma E to the Y is not in our domain of discourse. It's not a real number, it's a triple of them. Okay, but if our domain of discourse is all real numbers, the only thing you can substitute in is other real numbers or terms that represent them. 3z squared minus one represents a real number. and This is a triple, that's just not a number. Another example, okay, so here's a possible predicate statement. The domain of discourse is still all real numbers. Q of A or P of B implies, for every C there exists a choice of D so that P of C implies Q of D or Q of B. It's a mess. Forget trying to figure out what it means. All we're gonna do is ask, can I make a bunch of different substitutions? So here's a bunch of substitutions. We're gonna to try to check out which ones are valid and which ones are not. Starting from the beginning, can I replace A with 2C plus one? No, A is a free variable, that's good. But C is already existing in this statement, so I can't make this substitution. Can I replace every instance of C with 2A plus one? No, I cannot replace bound variables. Can I replace every instance of A with Z or Y? No. Z or Y is not a real number, okay? This isn't in our domain of discourse. I can replace it with Z. I could replace it with Y, but I can't replace it with the collection of symbols Z or Y. 3 or 10 is not a real number. 3 is a number, 10 is a number, but 3 or 10 is not a real number. Can I replace A with Z times Y? 
yes, A is a free variable and Z times Y is a legitimate term. Can I replace every instance of B with Z squared minus C? No, B is a free variable, so it's open to be substituted, but C already exists in this statement, so this is not an allowable substitution. Can I replace every instance of D with there exists an A? No, there exists an A isn't a number. And finally, can I replace every instance of B with Z plus Y? Absolutely, B is a free variable. Z plus Y is a real number once you make a specific choice of constants. This is a legitimate term, so this one's fine.